G'day, Michael here. I've been doing some work on the bench test of the BMW with Blender. Um, this is the exact standard BMW uh, bench test, and the only thing I've been playing with is really three factors the number of threads and the tile size. Now, well, I must add to that, I've also tried two different hardware configurations. Now, on the machine, I've tried doing a screen recording on the machine that you see here in this remote desktop, but what has happened is when it's uh, you know full tilt running its heart out, um, the audio breaks up and the screen recording you know basically stalls because the machine's so busy. As you can see, the machine right now, even though it's sharing the desktop, is pretty calm. There are 24 threads. That's 12 cores on two CPUs, so six cores per CPU, and it's hyper thread. Hyper thread, so it's 12 cores split across two CPUs, and obviously double that when you have hyper threading enabled. So it's 24 threads, that's not 24 cores. Right, now the machine is an old Dell T7500, 3.5 gigahertz nominal uh, core speed. The reason why I say nominal is because it'll run slower than that when the workload is lower, but it'll also sort of automatically overclock to about 3.8. Um, depending on the workload and obviously heat dissipation, etc. But the Dell T7500s and the Dell T5500s are actually really good at dissipating heat. So you can run the CPUs pretty hard without really noticing any throttling whatsoever. Um, yeah, so quite right, enough of that. What actually goes on? Now I've got this system on here so we can see how busy that machine is over there. At the moment it's floating around a few percent sort of thing. Um, but now, the default settings, when we use the GPU compute, which is what's enabled now, GPU compute, compute uses the GPU, which is a GTX 1080, uh, 6 gigabytes. And I think it was set to 256 pixels square. So I'll just restore that back to that, just so we're back to the normal. Yep. OK, so we've got 24 threads, it's auto-detected. And if I go render, it's going to be using the GPU cool. Let's do render now. Let's get that blue and set. Now it seems to be rendering a whole lot in one go, but in fact what happens, you'll notice at about the one minute mark, it's about 14 seconds, about the one minute mark, there'll be four tiles completed. Um, so I'll just let that run for a little bit longer. You can see the CPU usage is not full. We've basically got well, obviously if it's working on 12 tiles, there'll be 12 cores working, working or 12 threads working, but um, there'll be 12 threads untouched, even though we're using the GPU. Now it's already completed three of those tiles. Like I said, about the one minute mark should have all those first four. I don't know whether this shows up very well in the recording, but there's this is one of the tiles, that's another of the tiles, etc. Um, so. It was broken up into 12 tiles, but the top row are very you know, thin little bits of kind of a, I don't know, about a sixth of a tile. So they get done very quickly, and then it's got to work its way through, steadily completing its way through this through the simpler tiles, then working to the more difficult tiles. Now what I mean more, more difficult, obviously there's bigger tiles, but where you've got like the, the transparencies and refractions and reflections, there's a lot more computation required to do the ray trace. Um, when you think about just how our eyes work, right, we see light from an object, but that light on that object might have come from a reflection off another object, or actually a combination of reflections of other objects. So basically it's tracing a path from the light source, light source to your eye, in effect, that's what's happening in the real world. And the computer is having to emulate like the backwards tracking of that from your eye back to the um, light, light source, basically, off various different objects in the scene and whatever reflections and refractions might have taken place in the, in the way, so on the way. So here it's using the GPU plus the CPUs um, to do this job and you can see that the machine is greatly underutilized because it's still left doing the most complicated tiles. Now let's say all the tiles are fairly simple bar one, it would take as long as it takes for that last tile to be finished. So we really held up um, to what the basically the slowest tile can be. Right, so when I first did it, this initial test, 
you know, I was quite disappointed how long it took. So the delays here are actually not performance limitations of the computer, it's more we're giving a very unequal task to a different cause. So I played around with different options. Anyhow, this is still going. It's saying about 41% complete, and so far it's done 3 minutes 11 seconds. I'll show you a very interesting trick that I discovered with this, um, you know, the various tries I made. And what surprised me is the two Xeons outperform using the graphics adapter, even though the graphics adapter is a reasonably good graphics adapter. Um, I guess it's because the CPU cores have to hand off the work to the GPU, and so that handoff process is costing about as much benefit as it's getting. So um, you're left with no real benefit. In fact, I think the GPU is like a second or two slower than using just the CPUs on their own. So if if you try this on your own machine, you might find if you've got a very powerful processor, it might outperform. Um, the GPU handsomely anyway. Um, on the machine that I'm sitting in front of, I've got GTX 1060s, uh, this and another of my desktop machines, with similar dual Xeon arrangements. And the Xeons outperform the GPUs by probably about 30%. So if you've got a slower CPU and very powerful GPU, then obviously using the GPU is useful. If you've got a lot of CPU power, maybe a Threadripper or a pair of Xeons, or I don't know what the Epics are up to, but anything with lots of threads, lots of cores and lots of threads, you may be better off using the CPU. Anyhow, I'm no master with Blender. I'm just looking at the mechanics of how you know the crunching's happening and what I've discovered. If you want to learn about Blender, I'm not the guy. See the Blender Guru's um, YouTube channel. He's got a lot of good information. I hope one day to reach his level. But I think the sunlight. Anyway, my objective here is to get my machines fast as I can, so that if, as I get into using Blender, uh, I get a reasonable turnaround time. Now I'm using the Cycles Render Engine because that's the default for that Blender benchmark. EV is being developed and is expected to actually maybe produce like this kind of high quality maybe in a year's time. They're working significantly on it. I saw a bit of a write-up today. So that'll be interesting space. That's uh, my understanding is more along the lines of how games render. So perhaps it worked better with GPUs than Cycles do. But in any case, Cycles is the one for the best kind of results, I think, at the moment. And we're still waiting for this guy to finish. We're at five minutes. We're coming up to six minutes. It's saying another two and a half minutes to go. So I would say that's fairly accurate. So it's going to be about eight, eight and a half minutes, looking at that. I don't want to wait that long. Let's just stop that. So I think that's sort of eight and a half, nine minutes. That's what that will end up being. I'm going to stop that. Now what I'll do now is I'll change this to, let's go to the other extreme, the smallest tiles possible, which the smallest it allows is eight by eight pixels. Now let's do the render again. We're still using the GPU side. Uh, GPU plus CPU, a render image, you'll see something very different happens. It very quickly finishes each tile, right? So it's moving along very quickly. You'll notice as it gets to something more complex, it'll take more time to um, render. But the other thing that's quite interesting is the CPU usage is now full. It's absolutely flat out um, usage of the CPU, so we're not leaving any uh, machine horsepower on the table, untouched. We're tapping everything. So it's running 24 threads, as you can see, it's ripping through it pretty quickly. We're already at 12%, and I haven't had a chance to say much in that time. So it's really ripping along. It will slow down as it starts hitting the more complex textures, and where there's lots of reflections, or refractions, and whatnot going on. You can see there's sort of, there's a few breakaway tiles left behind as they take a bit more time to process. You can see generally it's ripping through really well. So we're getting good use of our machine's horsepower. So as you can see, that's, that's ripping through quite nicely. We're at the one minute mark, we're already about 24%. So, you know, 
good performance. It will slow down as we get into this, this thicker area here. So percentage wise it's talking about the completed pixels of that image. Uh, but that is not an indication of how much of the work it's done, if that makes sense. It's still got more work to do because it's more complex tiles. As we get to the other side of the, the first car, uh, we'll have a bit more grey space up here and so it'll pick up speed again where it gets simpler. Now this is by no means the last thing I'm going to show you, so it's worth sticking around. I might fast forward a few things to save some time. While that's doing that, I might look up um, what benchmarks others have around the place. So the 5950 seems to be able to do this in 115 seconds. Oh no, sorry. 4 minutes 34 seconds. So what's that? 3 fours 24, uh, 6 fours 24. 27, 270, let's call it 275 seconds. Let's compare that to what's this scale here? 275 seconds. So it's halfway between the Core i7 10700K or the Ryzen 7 2700X. So that's about the performance of that machine on the other end. Um, and what was that? Was just CPU only. So let's just run that CPU only. Just do that now, CPU. But I'll also do something else. Uh, we can let the hyper threading be handled, or well, the threading be handled by the hardware. But what I might do is let the Linux kernel do some uh, thread management. So now I've set it to 1,024 threads. Even though the machine's got physically 24 threads to work with, so I'm going to let the kernel do the, the swapping and changing. And I'm going to stick with the 8 pixel square tiles. That should be right, and render, render image. Now what you see now is quite an interesting little thing happen in that it's kind of more organic. The, the more the threads we have, the more organic the generation is. Now you, it's still populating, but it won't be long and it'll start to um, finish tiles and you'll notice that it'll sort of sprinkle its way up and it'll be slower on things in more detail and quicker on things of lower detail. And you can see the CPU usage is absolutely maxed now and that was already starting to complete tiles you see how that's working its way through now this is CPU only so there's the two Ryzen uh, two um, Xeon processors so we'll see what that machine can do it's a 12 year old machine so bear that in mind um, of the CPUs 5690 Xeon 5 X oh. <laughs> Xeon X5690 as I believe is the CPU uh, designation. As you can see it's really ripping through that at 22% through and it's 59 seconds. I haven't tried this particular trick on Windows, I've only been messing around with this on Linux so far, but I'm confident this is about the maximum I can squeeze out of this machine. They've also got some patterns that like work their way from the center. There's like a spiral. Um, at the moment, it's working from bottom to top. You can go top to bottom, left to right, yada yada. They're defined. Rowing out down here, you can see there's an order. You can play with those, but that's to me that's probably a little bit uh, specific to the image you're working on. But I think actually just small tiles and lots of threads seems to be you know the most beneficial. Um, mix of settings. I think it would be generally applicable. Sixty-four percent complete. At three minutes seven seconds. So I'll call that four minutes thirty-two seconds. So um, what's that? 240, 270, 272 seconds. Let's have a look at our comparison to other things. 272. So again, it's still between the Ryzen 7 2700X and the Core i7 10700K. So that's the sort of performance I'm getting. Bear in mind that's two Xeons. Two 12-year-old Xeons. Okay, so yeah, 5690 and it's a nominal 3.47 gigahertz. So that's the fastest of that series. And what's the 
GPU. Yeah, GTX 1080. Yeah, so that's what I have in the way of hardware. You can see that the GPU basically makes very little difference on this particular machine. I suspect if I had um, maybe two of the GPUs, I'd have better performance. But I seem to have hit pretty much a ceiling at both the CPU and GPU performance. In any case, you saw there 1,024 threads, 8 pixels by 8 pixels. Let's just play with, I don't know, 40 pixels. No, 32 pixels. Let's be indecisive. 32 pixels by 32 pixels, just to see what that does. Now there won't be 1024 tiles to do, so let's just see how it rolls. There's 510 tiles, so there's not going to be 1024 threads, there's only 510 possible. And it should be bumping them off fairly quickly. But bear in mind each tile, 32 is 4 times, so it's 8 times, so it's virtually 8 of the last kind of tiles that we had in each tile here. So it'd be interesting to see how this goes to speed. 4 minutes 32 is what we've got to beat. Now, as the tiles are completing, there's actually more CPU power left for the ones still to be processed. Because it was broken up into 1,024 threads, and there's only 24 um, sort of hardware threads, um, obviously as those threads disappear off the system, that leaves some CPU, you know, CPU time on the table to speed up the, other, the tiles that are left. Four minutes thirty-two before, and four minutes forty-three now. So it seems a little counterintuitive. You'd think larger tiles would be better, but apparently the smaller tiles are the better way to do things. So there you have it. Anyway, I hope those different um, experiments are a bit of interest to you. They certainly were for me. Um, Perhaps the next video I'll do is I'll show how to get this done in about 90 seconds by pairing a couple of computers together. Maybe I'll do that in my next video. Let me know in the comments what you think you'd like to see. And if you try some of these things, maybe report down in the comment section what results you get. But as you can see, I've got something from about you know, 8 or 9 minutes down to, well, pretty much half that. So 4 minutes 32 was the quickest I had with this configuration. Bear in mind that computer also still had the overhead of sending the graphics across the network. So I'll probably get another 10 seconds of saving just working right in front of that machine rather than exporting across the network like I am here. Alright, well I guess that's it. Feel free to like, share, subscribe, ask a question, leave a comment. Bye for now.